Okay, so what I have here is just a sample scene I put together. All it is is a disk emitting a series of particles. These particles have an age limit. They're deleted at the age limit, and they have a modulate value by age percentage that changes the size to give them a bit more of this shape. I'm just going to go back to first frame and just take the grid here and just hide that. The particles should still emit. It's just I won't see that disk, sorry. Um, when I start rendering them out. When I go ahead and render these, you're going to see initially a bunch of grey balls. And that's not very flame-like. So we're going to use this one as a simple way of creating our flame shader. I'm going to go to the render tree, and you see right now it just has a scene shader turned on using. So that's why it's grey, just a default C material. The easiest way is to go to material and create pick the particles first of all, particle cloud, and go material and create an ice particle volume. And what that would do is assign a new shader, just close this down for a second. And this shader is um the particle renderer shader with a particle shaper. And this is great if you want to create a quick cloud and it's pretty much a default cloud shader that has a few options in it. And the reason it's kind of fluffy cloud right now, it has this particle shaper. And this is really designed if you want to create some clouds, it has some presets like you know, billowing or fluffy. And it has a cell and a fractal shader and and inclusion fractal and a regular shape. So a bunch of things. We're not actually going to use this one, so we're just going to delete that. And we're just going to use the basic particle render shader. And we're going to have to feed in some color into this to again make it from a yellow blob to actually a flame like object. Inside this compound are two nodes a particle density node and a particle volume node, and a couple of other nodes that really just control the inputs. The way these work is if I disconnect this for a second is if you go to the particle shaders from the shader preset you'll see particle volume and if you hook that straight in to the volume you'll get a grey box if you actually want to see the particle shape you need a particle density node hooked in and this allows you to control the density and the actual particle shape and then you can also hook in here into the colour you've got both your different ambient and diffuse color and then you can use either per particle or per cloud colors in here as well. So we're going to start by keeping it pretty simple using this default particle render shader you can see it right here as well and that will just make life easier for us when we hook into the volume so we have this yellow blob to give it some color, we're going to use the particle gradient. It's a gradient shader, and it has the ability to output both colors and alphas based on either age or density. And let me explain what I mean here. We want to hook these into the per particle gradient. If we put in the particle color, we'll just get the single color. You'll see that here. But if we hook it into the, per, the global gradient and per cloud gradient, we actually get a gradient going through. Right now we've got some weirdness going on with the blue on the outside and some colours on the inside. And that's because it's using the gradient position to be based on density and age. Density is going from the either densest areas to the least dense, so it's starting here at five. And five is kinda how dense it is and, and ending at zero. If we look at the gradient blue and black are the last colours and that's where it's going out to the least dense areas on the edges. If I turn this off then it's just a standard age based particle and you can blend these two together to get different effects. Under the gradient we're just going to leave it right now the cloud density off and just use the per age attribute. If the density is great if you're doing like explosions and clouds as well. So we can do a default, there's a default coloured right now, there's fire. 
that would probably be a good one to start with and that would give us some fire like colours it's not quite what we want and just so we have some good reference I brought into my clip viewer a flame image Let me just make that half size so we can kind of see can we match some of the colours to this so it's not quite there yet the gradient isn't the only place to colour the particles you also have colour on the particle renderer shader we should get some of those set so we get some more realistic colours you've got density that's how densities are if we lower down make the particles more transparent or more dense less dense and if you increase this you increase density so seeing more making the particles more opaque so you can see through less of them on the particle colour is just a colour you can override the colour if you want to we don't want to so we'll keep going volume colour this is important you have an, an ambient tint it will give everything a kind of blue tint by default I just hold control and set this to white or whatever you want your ambient tint to be and you can also bring your ambient intensity up as high as you want I'm going to go all the way to 1 to get some nice bright colours here diffuse you can turn your diffuse intensity and you can say whether it has any illumination I'm going to turn this off so we're only using ambient illumination at this point so this gives us better colours based on our gradient if I left the volume colour to blue and this on it would be hard to match my image in the game when I start changing these around we get different results so back to the gradient we've got some colours here so we in this case we start with this kind of brownish colour so I'm just going to rearrange this slightly move the brown colour down there and that would probably be the first colour so bring that here we've got the white colour start fairly early bring that down a bit here I want some of the reds and yellows so we're just going to do the start and then we can make some more colours further up that's way too much red so we're just going to decrease these down you can move these boxes around to decrease it's down we can also make this red more towards a brown colour and we can gain so we go more even to orange again just keep on tweaking this until I get roughly the colour I want so I'm happy with that we'll go to yellow next again we're just tweaking these and working with this and you can spend a lot of time trying to get exactly the result you want so I'm not going to spend too much time in here but I'm pretty close to what I want here so we're going to go to the next step in a second okay so I've made this flame colours now I want to of course get the shape slightly better so we'll do that inside the particle renderer and in the density tab you've got different things to control the shape you've got the shape density limit but what we have here is metaball like shape and elliptical shape and if we adjust the elliptical shape we can actually make the particles more elongated and start to give it in this case more of that kind of flame look we can also adjust the metaball effect now kind of erode everything in a bit as well maybe just a touch of that we might want to go back eventually to the gradient and tweak that. We can actually tweak it inside this node if we need to. So we may want to go back to the gradient and tweak some of these colours down a bit lower to get some of those colours back in again. The next thing I'm going to do with these is just going to go in and give it some transparency. So it's going to start almost fully transparent it's going to end pretty much fully transparent and we're just moving the alpha setting it to zero then we're going to go to semi-transparent maybe around a third in a little less there even less there and just kind of adjusting these, these alpha values 
and you'll notice even as adjusting, nothing really happens. The reason nothing's happening right now is because we're only hooked into the color, and alpha only affects the density. So we hook in density now, we'll see very quickly it will actually change. And if we go back here, you'll be able to see some changes, especially if I do something more radical. You'll notice the alpha is actually affecting the particles. I just want to change this one here down more. And you should see some of the bottom start to disappear, as you can see there. So bring that one back for a second. So you can see how these work. I think I add an extra one there in the middle. Let me just right mouse button and delete that one. There we go. Okay, so we have all our alpha set now. And um, the next is how can we share this so we can use it on our actual stick example. So we can take both the gradient and the particle renderer, right mouse button, and create a compound, just as you would with any ice tree node. Once you have your compound, you can right mouse button, compound properties, you can tell it where it goes, what it's called, we'll call this flame, OK, and then we'll just right mouse button and export the compound. I have one already, so I'm just going to overwrite it. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this. What we're going to do next is we're going to go and open up our stick burning scene, and then we're going to try to apply this on here and see how it works.